Day one for 30 days of ham radio. This is an idea that I came up with two or three months ago. Gonna do a different topic inside of amateur radio every day for the next 30 days, and we're going to do a fundraiser. This whole thing is gonna be a fundraiser benefiting the AWRL Teachers Institute. I've never done anything like this before. I'm looking forward to it. It's gonna be fun, so come along for the ride. Here's how this is gonna work. Over the next 30 days, I am going to do a different activity inside of amateur radio. Now, I might double up kind of here and there. Like today, we're gonna to do POTA. POTA is one of the best things to happen to ham radio in the last five years. It's a very fun event. It's very active. You get out to a park, you start calling CQ, you're gonna make a bunch of contacts most of the time. And uh, it's really reinvigorated HF operations in amateur radio, in my opinion. So we're gonna do that today. We're gonna to try to do some sideband today, see how the bands are. I'm gonna do some FT8 later. I might do a couple of other events similar to POTA, but POTA is gonna be day one. But over the next 30 days, we're gonna do something different each day inside of ham radio, just to showcase everything that you can do inside of ham radio. And let me tell you something, we're not gonna hit everything. I could do 90 days or 180 days of ham radio and still not hit everything. We're not gonna hit everything in 30 days. But these are 30 different activities that I very much enjoy. Several of them are actually new and I've never done before. I've read about them, I've discovered them recent. A couple of them I just discovered recently and I was like, that sounds like it might be fun, but never tried it before. So I'm gonna challenge myself and do some new stuff that I've never done before that I'm gonna have to learn also. Seagulls. But over the next 30 days while we're doing this, we're also gonna be doing a fundraiser for the AWRL Teachers Institute. Kind of the reason behind this project is to do the fundraiser for AWRL because of all of the students and teachers that get exposed to amateur radio because of that program. It's a very good program to support. Two years ago, Mike K8MRD on Ham Radio Tube did a telethon live stream and raised about $15,000 in one night. It was a long live stream, but it was all in one night. And then last year, Josh on Ham Radio Crash Course did another telethon and raised about $20,000 in one night. So I have set my goal this month, this next 30 days to raise $30,000 for the AWRL Teachers Institute. You can go to awrl.org forward slash three zero days. It'll take you to the page. You can donate any amount you want, small, medium, large, whatever. And I will start reading those at the end of each video after like the first two or three days when we start getting some donations roll in. If you wanna put a little note in there that advertises your product, brand, store, ham radio club, whatever, I will read those at the end of the night if they're over a certain amount. I think we said I'll read the new comments every night for everything over $100. Additionally, over the course of the next 30 days, for every new subscriber I get on the channel, I will donate a dime. Now the goal is to get 10,000 subscribers over the next 30 days, which is a, <laughs> which is a hefty goal. I've never gotten 10,000 new subscribers on my channel in the matter of 30 days. For however many we do get, I will donate a dime. 10,000 subscribers would be $1,000 that I donate myself to the Teachers Institute at the end of that. But more importantly than that, more importantly than that is the number of views on these videos. So for every video that reaches 10,000 views during this 30 days, I will donate $100 per video. It's 30 days, 10,000 views each, $100 each, that's $3,000. So I will donate $4,000 myself if we can make all those numbers happen. So all you guys have to do is subscribe to the channel, watch the video, watch the video several times, share the video to your ham radio club, share it to your group of ham radio friends, share it to your ham radio business, share it to someone that you think would get value out of it, share it to any teachers that you might have friendships with, that teach inside of the STEM atmosphere at their schools. Share it to anyone that you think would be interested in getting amateur radio into a school. Share it everywhere you can so that we get more views and I can do the donation thing myself. So 10,000 views per video, $100 per video, and uh, one dime for every new subscriber I get during this time. Follow along with me. If anyone has any suggestions for something to do inside of amateur radio, I have the next 30 days planned out.
But if I get some kind of really good suggestion, I'll be like, oh, that's an activity I never even thought of. Maybe we should do that instead. I might pivot. But I do have the next 30 days planned out. It's not a problem. There's plenty to do inside of this hobby, inside of this radio service. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how this grows, how it goes. You guys participating in the comments, I'm looking forward to that. Thank you for being here. And uh, let's go do some parks on the air. Got some go juice and a sandwich for later because I might be out there for a bit. I don't know yet. Honestly, not real sure how long I will or won't be there. I like to go to the park and try to make 100 contacts every time I set up. You're going to see the gear that I use and what I've got. And it is not a one pound poda pack. I put it that way. <laughs> I've got too much stuff, but I don't care. That way I can do a couple different radios if I want to or do FT8 that's a little bit easier with certain radios than it is with other radios. Maybe even do some Winlink, I don't know. Winlink is on my list of things to do this cycle, but I'm not sure when I'm gonna get a chance for that yet. But it really depends on band conditions also. You know, sometimes the band conditions are just terrible and sideband won't work much at all, but, but FTA will work fine. Or uh, if you know CW, CW would work fine because it's a uh, lower, lower noise mode, punches through the band's a little bit better than sideband does. Sideband's probably the hardest band to do, but it's probably my favorite at this point in time also. So we're going to see what the bands look like anyway. Good. How are you doing? Yeah, just a day pass. Just me. Thank you very much. You too. That annual pass is worth its weight in gold if you do a lot of POTA. Every state varies about how how much they are. This one's about $75 for a year. And if you go to a park, it's usually about $5 for a day pass. So you would have to go to a park, what's that, uh, 15 times? 15 times in a year to pay for itself. If you go less than 15 times in a year, maybe, maybe you don't want one. But every state is different also. That's Texas, but it might be different in your state. Got set up. Gonna do some uh, single sideband parks on the air. And so far, tuned, tuned up and down the band so far, and uh, it sounded like a really good day. Sounded like a low noise floor, not much interference. I already worked one station that was a park to park. Right now it looks like the band is 20 meters at least is open and clear. So let me show you what I'm using here. So this is actually gonna be my first official recorded video with the FTX1 Optima on POTA. I've used this one other time on POTA but I did not make a video. So we've got the FTX1 Optima right here. I'm using World Radio League to log, and I have my Tar Heel uh, Little Pro HP vertical antenna right there, which I've used many times at, uh, at many parks. And the reason I like this antenna is because it just sits on a tripod. I've made several videos about this, so you can check the channel on that if you want to, but it sits on a tripod. That way you don't have to stake anything into the ground. You don't have to put anything in a tree. You don't have to do anything that's obtrusive to the land around you. It just, just sits there. And uh, even if you're on concrete, it'll just sit there. So it makes it very easy to set up. And it's tunable. And you can do uh, multiple bands with it. So I'm looking forward to this. This should be really good. Let's, let's go. Glad I picked this up today. Sending up antennas and working parks on the air sure does build up your appetite. So the purpose of POTA is to set up in a park, state park, national park, wildlife reserve, historical site, something like that, and set up an HF radio, or you can do VHF too, just not as many contacts out there, and try to contact as many people as you can. But if someone else is in a park as well, then you get a park to park. You are in a park, they are in a park, and you get a park to park, so you write down their number in the log. They get credit for working you, you get credit for working them. So it's kind of a neat operation to do I just worked two park to parks, kind of tuning up and down the band right now. I'll find a clear frequency here in a minute and call CQ and spot myself, and I should get some pretty good results from it because the band sounds really good today. Oh, that's the VA guy. There's some kind of uh, Victor, a veteran special event station going on there. Alpha Alpha Four Foxtrot Delta, park to park. 
Park to park from Kilo Charlie 5, Hotel Whiskey Bravo. Hi, right, Jason. Uh, good to hear you. Uh, uh, you're 5 9 in Park US 2175. 2175. Hey, it populated for me. Okay, Jeff. Or, I'm sorry, Jeremy. Uh, yeah, man, you're about a 5 uh, 6, 5 7 into Texas today. Hey, thanks for watching, man. I'm recording a video right now, so you'll see yourself on there soon. Uh, thanks for activating today, 73. 73. There you go. It's always fun to work park to parks because you can actually do like a worked all states from a POTA. Worked all states is where you're sitting at home on your HF station. You've worked a station in every state of the United States, all 50 states. 51, really, because Washington, D.C. counts, and I think Puerto Rico might count, and U.S. Virgin Islands. Anyway, um, you can do the same thing in the park. You can sit in the park and try to work all 50 states. Kind of a fun activity. Just something fun to do. All right, let's find a clear frequency. Yeah, that's what you are here. Fantastic. That guy's in Albuquerque. I'm in Galveston, Texas. As a lady and a person. <laughs> this guy, This guy was on here giving a, like a Bible lesson earlier. Cool. All right. Some people out there on the band... Let's try 14327. Is the frequency in use from KC5HWB? Okay, 14327. World Radio League. I'm going to put my frequency into World Radio League. And I'm going to spot myself. That way I'll start making contacts faster. You don't have to spot yourself. I find it's more fun to do that. This is the log. This is all the logs I've put into this app since I started using it. And again, this is on my phone. You're, the screen you're looking at right now is on my phone. So I'm going to go to New Logbook, and I'm going to put KC5HWB at US3013-2025. I name my logs that way. You can name it whatever you want to, obviously, because uh, that's back from the day where you had to name it a certain format to send it to the uploaders at POTA, but now you can upload your own logs at POTA. It doesn't matter. Okay, and there's actually more than that that it'll do. So I got POTA right there. I'm going to find my park, which I already know where my park is, but if you don't, if you're at a new park, you just click on Find My Park. Click the park that's that you want, Galveston Island State Park. CQ, CQ, CQ Parks on the Air, CQ Parks on the Air, Kilo Charlie 5, Hotel Whiskey Bravo. Calling CQ Parks on the Air from Galveston Island State Park, US 3013, calling CQ POTA and listening. Kilo, Kilo 4, Papa Alpha Lima. Kilo, Kilo 4, Papa Alpha Lima, what's up, brother? About a 5-5 five, five today. Roger, roger, I got you about a 5-8 over here in Tennessee today, buddy. All right, bud, thanks for being out there. Good to work you today, uh, 73. Good luck with your activation, buddy. Copy. All right, bud. Good to work again, uh, Bill. 73. QRZ, Kilo Charlie 5, Hotel Whiskey Bravo Parks on the air. Whiskey Zero X Ray X Ray Tango Mobile 5 5. I got you 5 by 9. I appreciate you being there and I appreciate your videos, over. All right. Well, thanks for watching the videos, man. Good to work you over the air. Sounding good from the mobile station in Kansas. Uh, thanks for being out there. 73. QRZ from Kilo Charlie 5 Hotel Whiskey Bravo Parks in the air. QRZ from Kilo Charlie 5 Hotel Whiskey Bravo Parks in the air. November 8th something? Yeah, November 8th. Echo Yankee Hot Okay, November 8, uh, I'm sorry, November 8, Echo, Yankee, Foxtrot, 5555 into Texas. Okay, very good. Uh, yep, yep, I got that radio with me, although right now I'm talking on the uh, Yezu FTX-1 Optima, but I do have the Lab 599 with me, so I'll probably be doing something with it this week. Very good, I have one off of little radio, 873. All right, 73, thanks for being out there. QRZ, Kilo Charlie 5, Hotel Whiskey Bravo Parks in the air. Kilo November 4, November Golf Kilo. Kilo November 4, November Golf Kilo 5-9. Five, 5-9 nine. Five, nine in Tennessee, thank you and have a good day, 73. Thank you for Tennessee again, 73, QRZ. Kilo Delta 9, Kilo Delta 9, Romeo Zulu Golf, was it? That's a Roger, that's a Roger, I got you 5-7 Central Indiana. Copy 5-7 Indiana, also a 5-7 into Texas today. All in all, I made about 53 
yeah, 53 contacts. Let's see the map here I put on the screen. Great time activating. So again, this is a fun activity that was uh, created actually in about 2016 by the ARRL. It was called the National Parks on the Air, and they did it for a year, and then, and then it ended. They did it from January to December in 2016, and then it ended. And then a couple of guys had a brainstorm idea, a fantastic idea. Like I said, one of the best ideas in ham radio in the last five to ten years that we should make this a normal thing. So Parks on the Air was created. The website you can go to, you can go to pota.app, P-O-T-A dot A-P-P, and find parks near you. You can drill down by country, by state, by area. Uh, it started in the USA, but it's expanded to many, many countries now. There's many countries across the globe that have parks in the air now. So check and see if parks in the air exist in your country. And uh, if it is, get on the air. Again, this is day one of 30 days of ham radio. And I'm going to be doing a different ham radio activity every day for the next 30 days. And we're going to be doing a fundraiser for ARRL Teachers Institute. They teach students. They bring teachers into classroom, into a classroom. Uh, they fly them up to Connecticut and uh, they teach teachers so that they can go back to their respective classrooms and schools and teach students. It's a very excellent program. It's a great way to get the next generation into amateur radio. And that's what we're doing today. So most of the videos I'm gonna do this week, or this month, I should say, are going to be, a lot of them are gonna be new to me. I haven't done it before. And uh, some of them are gonna be pretty commonplace. It's stuff that I have done before, but uh, they're meant to be intro videos for, if you never heard of Parks in the Air, never done it, that's what this video was about. And uh, we're gonna do some more just like it. So put a comment below, let me know what you think about this series. Be sure to share this video where you can. Appreciate you guys being out there. Good to work you on the air also, if I did today. 73 to all.